Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations. And this video, I'm gonna be diving into the solar eclipse in Libra and giving you uh, some understanding, some insight, and hopefully some reflection on how to navigate this solar eclipse energy, uh, giving my thoughts from an evolutionary astrology perspective, and hopefully being able to tie in some incredibly complex and very nuanced energy patterns that are present in the sky right now. So I think just before I go ahead and sort of allow my mind and my, my, my intuition to, to lead, I just want to quickly describe what a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse is and why they are significant. So they're significant because when you have a new moon, which is a solar eclipse, and a full moon, which is a lunar eclipse, take place, they align with the nodes of the moon, okay? So on the screen right now, you'll see that there is an image that pops up and you'll see the image of the north node and you'll see the image of the south node. And when we have eclipses, this is when a regular new moon and full moon align with the moon's nodes. So what this translates to in a more abstract and non-linear way is that the energy pattern that is held in the lunar eclipse or the solar eclipse becomes emphasized and it also reflects a integration of a five or six month process. Okay, it is an integration of energy over a period of a five or six month process. So every five and a half to six months, we have a new set of lunar and solar eclipses in certain signs. And then we go through that period of time, that, that pattern, that holding pattern, and we develop these themes in our conscious or consciousness. So think of um, a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse as a headline in your newsfeed that is consistent and persistent. So every day you pick up your phone and you look through your newsfeed on, on whatever source you do. And on the top, it always, it always consistently says um, new moon and Aries, right? So it's like energy of independence, energy of dependence. So over a period of six months, you have assimilated this attention, this, this awareness of independence as a theme, and it becomes like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So lunar and solar eclipses are consistent themes that we work on over a long period of time that develop, or in other ways, integrate into our consciousness. And so this becomes the way that we experience our reality, right? It's a, it's a pathway or a patterning that ingrains within our consciousness. And of course, these patterns are speaking to larger cycles that are taking place as well. Like Pluto in Capricorn is doing its thing, right? Uranus in Taurus is doing its thing. So when you have a synthesis, right, a cohesion of other planets and other cycles existing, the lunar eclipse and solar eclipse holds it all together in a pattern and it says, here's what you are focusing on in your consciousness. And so if you reflect back over the last sort of like, say, I don't know, two years, you'll notice that there is a pattern that has emerged in your life that has become persistent in your life. And you will see how you've changed relative to these themes that these lunar and solar eclipses have been presenting to us. Okay. So, they are very significant. They play a deep role in the development of your emotional and psychological interaction with the world. And they definitely impact the way that we as a civilization or a collective consciousness uh, navigates reality. Okay. Okay. So uh, this video is going to be fairly long. So I encourage you to Take your time with it. Um, come back to the video. Keep replaying certain segments. Um, there are some of the pieces of content that will deeply resonate with people and 
for others that might not necessarily speak to you in that way. Um, you know, that's just the nature of how this conversation will go as well. Now, quickly before I go ahead with it, I just want to let you know down in the description are two links. These are to schedule a free 15 minute call with me. One of them speaks to those of you that are serious about your astrological practice and you would like mentorship or some help around developing your skills and so that you can go out into the world and actualize a vision or a dream or um, your ability to want to start your astrological practice. I can help you with that. And I want to see if that's possible. So there's a link there. Book a call with me. I'll have a chat with you and see if that's something that's feasible. And also, um, for those of you that are serious about deep soul work and you want to work on yourself in a more deeper and more um, embodied way, then I also want to have a conversation with you and see if there's an opportunity to work together and I can actually support you. So there down in the link or in the description is a link over there. Um, even if I can't help you, I can still at least put you in the right direction, okay? All right. So, um, as I said, this is a very complex and very nuanced energy pattern that will and is continually to express itself and, of course, will be a holding pattern for the next six months. So, I'm saying to you straight up front, hold on to your seats because we are in for a show. We are in for a show. Last week, Friday, I released a video that talked about it is um, sort of chaotic out there. It's, it's, it's very volatile out there. And that was because Venus and Uranus were creating a square together. And we also had Pluto and Mars squaring each other. Now that this Venus Uranus square has sort of come out of its intense cycle, what we are experiencing right now is the after effects of that aspect. Individually within your life, there have been a lot of things that were highly accelerated, like a lot of things were happening in your life for a very short period of time. It was like, bah, like this. And now all of a sudden there's a kind of like a, a, a cooling off period where the energy within your life is starting to kind of land for you. And for the most part, that probably feels very disturbing because you know that there's a clear path that has emerged with the square. You know that it's been pretty stressful over the last two weeks in terms of um, our lives accelerating. And now what will happen is you will start to pick up information and understanding and sort of regroup and reorientate your self as this square has come out of this crisis phase, okay? Now, when Uranus makes any contact to any planets, so in this case, Venus, there are two main things that are going to take place. The first one is that you are going to experience a tremendous amount of accelerated energy. Things are going to happen or you're going to feel and perceive reality as things are happening very rapidly. And this is a behaviorism, a principle in the Uranus energy that speaks to rapid growth in a different direction. Okay, so that's how deconditioning or decentralization works. So think of it in the sense, as I talked about in the previous video, I said there is a pattern within your life a sort of way of behaving that feels and has now become outdated. You've kind of grown out of it very rapidly, right? Poof, here I am. And now you're kind of looking back at that old pattern and you can feel the distance between where you're presently at and what that old pattern was about. Now, from the limbic systems perspective, right? The, the part of you that, that wants to map reality and, and say this is safe and this is not safe. This is a very disturbing experience because now all of a sudden you're in a territory that feels very foreign. It feels very unpredictable, it feels very volatile. And so there is a necessary need to have your brain's psychology update itself in relation to the new feelings or sensations or states of reality in which you're experiencing. And depending on the nature of what accelerated for you, 
that will describe or reflect the, the, the intensity of the experience. So for some of us, it might simply just be a step in a new direction. For other people, it can be a pretty huge move in a direction that that distance between where you were and where you're now at is so large that you can feel they're like, whoa. So of course that will take some time for your, your, your perception to start updating to this new reality. Just breathe through that process and try to not make any rash decisions and re react to that, un that anxiety, that uncertainty. It's simply just a sort of dissonance between the part of you that felt safe and secure in this old pattern and the part of you that has emerged into something completely new. Yeah? Okay. So that's number one. Number two, and this is, speaks more to the current state of affairs that is happening in the world right now, where all the primary attention is at. It's always been there. It's just now it's more salient, right? More present, more real, more in the focus. And that is that Uranus speaks to suppression and when suppression, when something has been suppressed for such a long period of time that it, it cannot contain that level of suppression anymore. So there's an eruption or, an, or a rapture or an emergence that creates a very distinct explosion. And this is oftentimes experienced when people have experienced trauma when there is violations of natural law, where emotions have been repressed, 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 and then all of a sudden they, the container can ho cannot hold the repression anymore and there's an explosion. And then what comes out into the surface is all of the distortion that has taken place when the suppression has occurred. So collectively, you are witnessing where suppression where natural laws and boundaries have been violated, broken down, have occurred, where there is distortion, where there's manipulation, where there is the need for control, Uranus has come along with its square to Venus and it says, sorry, kiddo, this is not happening anymore. And the degree of which that suppression and then that rupture will take place, that explosion will take place, is directly relative to that which has been suppressed. So if you take something that's very small and you keep it suppressed like that, as soon at some point the natural energy will uh, explode through like that and the explosion could be small. But if there is a tremendous amount of repression, when it comes to the surface, it will create devastation. The deeply tragic thing about Iranian structures or Iranian patterns is that when that explosion takes place, when that rupture takes place, when that opening up takes place, there is no moral dynamic that is present there. Whatever raptures, whatever ruptures, whatever breaks, whatever explodes through happens. And if you're in the way, you're in the way. This is probably one of the most difficult things to work with when you're talking about Iranian experiences. And so that's why there's tremendous amount of PTSD, disassociation that emerges out of Iranian experiences because the nature of something happened explodes so fast. And then there's fragmentation, there's disorientation, there is loss of structure. So with Uranus, Venus square at the moment, Uranus conjunct Jupiter and Taurus, particularly, you're witnessing that in the world right now. Now, another note that I want to make related to Uranus-Jupiter conjunction in Taurus is that the archetype of Taurus in nature, in life, and in the human behaviorism, right, the human organism, the way that human beings exist, is that Taurus will correlate to self-preservation or preservation. So just in terms of the existence and the need for something to exist, it needs sustenance. And so therefore it develops a pattern in which it will need to survive and will do anything to survive. So if you don't eat for four days, your psychology will move into a state of survival and anything 
that will provide you with sustenance will be perceived as that's what I need. But once your sustenance and your levels of, of um, survival have been sorted out, you may perceive that same object with less urgency. So, Tyrian processes, Taurus processes, Uranus and Taurus, Jupiter and Taurus, what they reflect here, as you can start to put the threading together, is that Uranus explodes things, erupts it, and what is erupting is what has been repressed down beneath the surface. So we as a society, we as the world, we as people, the way that we navigate the world is we have a series of boxes that we will categorize reality within. And anything that's outside the frame of what we perceive is correct based on our internal judgments, anything that society frames as taboo or incorrect, right? There's, so there's a bigger picture, there's a bigger frame of how things are defined as what is okay and what is not okay. When you have frames defined by society or cultural conditioning, Right? Or if you come more into yourself, right? when you look at the more sort of internal structuring of how you frame reality, anything that exists outside of that frame will then be repressed, judged, or stuffed down and seen as incorrect. It will be disfigured. So with Uranus now in Taurus, along with Jupiter, squaring, or well not squaring, but... Um, interacting with the uh, south node in Libra, the sun in Libra. Right? There's an inconjunct there. I'll show you the chart soon. What you have here is an emergence, Uranus, that wants to rupture that which has been suppressed and repressed within the container of what is morally correct and not correct. And what comes to the surface is all of the parts, the disowned shadow, So that's why I'm saying to you, hold on to your seats, because this lunar, the solar eclipse in, in uh, Libra is pointing to the most part, the need to observe and confront the nature of your own shadow dynamics. What has been repressed in you? What has been hidden away that has been disfigured? What do we disassociate from that needs healing? So on an individual level, you may interact with somebody and then what all of a sudden sort of project some deep uh, unconscious material into the surface, which is completely normal. That's how we learn about our subconscious by bringing it into the, into the conscious world in an unconscious way. And then we get a mirror back that says to us, hey, this doesn't seem correct. For those of you that want to understand astrology in a more deeper level, that's exactly what happens between the natural relationship between Taurus and Libra, okay? We have a subjective inner relationship to ourself with all of its conditioning and its framing and what we hide away from the world because it's taboo or what we don't want to reflect or the parts of ourselves that we disown because it's been criticized or judged or persecuted. And so as an act of self-preservation, I don't want to expose myself to the threat of whatever. I will repress that or hide that. Unfortunately for the collective and human beings at this point to tell me Uranus is coming along and saying, that's unhealthy, that's unhealthy, that's unhealthy, this has been repressed, this has been repressed, that's unhealthy, that's a shadow complex, and so it must come to the surface. So, it is emerging. This energy is coming to the surface. And it's intense. Now, we can respond to it in two ways. You can respond to it in two ways. You can, through a process of contemplation and inner inquiry and questioning and then feedback through people, come to understand where those suppressed, repressed, hidden parts of yourself, where you disown it. That's primarily what this is about, right? We disown the pieces that have been decided by society as bad. We don't want to be rejected or exiled by society, so therefore we, re, we hide it away and we only kind of talk to people that we feel safe with about these parts, and sometimes we don't even do that at all. Or Uranus and Jupiter at the moment in retrograde there 
They're saying, this is not healthy for the organism. This is unnatural and it must come to the surface to be confronted. And so now when you're at, say, you're in a relationship with somebody and you bring out these more um, unhealed states, you get an environmental feedback that says, hey, by the way, this is not okay. This needs to be addressed. This needs to be healed. This needs to be looked at. And then you can reintegrate the, those parts of yourself that have been disowned by addressing them. But when this happens at a collective level, the complexity and the nuance of, the, of this situation becomes way more volatile, way more unpredictable. And again, as I said, way more complex. And this is the challenge for humanity at the moment. When we enter Pluto and Aquarius, these themes of how do we organize, organize ourselves as species is going to come into the front and center. In 2008, when Pluto entered Capricorn, we came into where institutions, structures were deeply corrupt, deeply misaligned with natural law, where violations of abuse and power were existing, amongst many other things that we needed to internally begin to address and work on. And for a lot of people that went on that Pluto in Capricorn journey over the last 15 years or 14 years, you'll have come to a more deeper, deepened inner state of emotional well-being for the most part. So you know from direct experience of witnessing Pluto through Capricorn that there is deep themes of collective change that will take place. That patterning will stay the same, it's just now it's Aquarius theme as opposed to a Capricorn theme. And so yes, there will be more transparency regarding where these displaced, unhinged, emotional patterns of distortion exist. And Pluto and Aquarius will move it through and everybody will chime in with their own two cents. So I do foresee going forward with Pluto and Aquarius, a tremendous amount of collective healing because there will be a sort of collective cohesion that will come together like a collective mind that will come together and will point out things that are not right. The shadow side of this process is, is that those that cannot be able to transmute this, this, this energy will form factions but this is for another conversation to have. So the, the thread that I'm where I was really going with this is that right now, you are, we are, I am going through a deep collective purge of where there has been deep suppression, emotionally and psychologically, and that is emerging to the surface. So Saturn opposed Venus at the moment, Virgo Pisces will speak to this dilemma that we face as we move through this current energy pattern. And the dilemma that we have to face is a deep humiliation Right? And, and no, no, actually, I, 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 I take that back. I say it is a necessary need to look deeply at where these patterns of distortions are present and to ask ourselves the question, do we want to keep propagating those patterns or do we want to come into a state of acceptance that these patterns are present? We do know... We no, we no longer want them to be unhealthy within us. And so we need to address them with a sense of humility, which is tough. In the astrological immersion course that I'm currently running with many people at the moment, 
when we were doing the Virgo archetype, we were processing through each of our abduction stories. Now, Venus is currently in Virgo, it's opposing Saturn in Pisces. And when you have these two polarities, these two energies of Saturn in Pisces and, and Venus in Virgo, but more so in terms of Virgo Pisces axis, what we learn from these symbols, these signs, Virgo and Pisces, is that A, as we go through life, we are challenged with and are faced with experiences that are deeply disturbing to our psyche. And situations and circumstances can come our way and can remove the innocence from us. The innocence is taken away, this childlike wonder, the sense of the world is just beautiful with amazing rainbows and butterflies and look at the bunnies and all of these things here and everything's just so great. That is not the truth. There are aspects of this place that are amazing and wonderful and beautiful in so many ways. And that is the principle of agape. There's the principle of beauty in terms of Venus, right? Or Venusian processes or love. These key words that acknowledge the principle, right? Just this amazement. But there are also experiences that are running parallel to that, which is betrayal, abandonment loss, tragedy, suffering, they are present. And we tend to avoid those patterns because they are uncomfortable for us. And to be honest, we haven't really developed a psychological and emotional framework of reality that helps us address these things as an aspect of life. That is what Uranus and Taurus is trying to do. It's trying to awaken us to the collective body within ourselves by showing us, hey, by the way, here's how this is affecting our capacity as a species to coexist in a more peaceful way. But also at the same time, giving us the capacity to realize that we need to address these suppressions and behaviorisms and frameworks because they're no longer supporting the emotional, overall emotional wealth and health. This message will only speak to a collection of people. This is not a conversation that is being held with consensus. I don't, I don't expect or presume or have an idealistic perspective that what I'm sharing here is something that we as a collective all of a sudden just go, whoa, hold on, this story is real here? We've got to do that? No. There will be a continuation of delusion and psychopathy and, and power games and struggles. and stuff. So there will be there. It's something that we just have to, in some way, recognize as part of this world, which in and of itself is incredibly disturbing. But for those that are tuned into what I'm talking about here and have the capacity, the agency to come into the resonance, you will understand and notice that if you have gone on some form of healing journey at this point in time, you will feel deeply with inside of yourself that it is necessary to look at that which is disfigured within yourself due to repression, due to suppression, due to trauma, etc. And addressing those patterns will free you emotionally from some of the deep internal turmoil that you may be experiencing. And by contributing to your internal work, you will be able to contribute to the greater collective ability to help solve challenges and problems that we face as a collective at the moment. So coming back to the Virgo Pisces axis again of this Virgo process, each of us, the world has gone through, we have been abducted. We have come into the underworld. The idea that the world is this beautiful, magical little place that we can just wake up to and have our little patterns and things like that, it's not the case all the time. The reality of it is, is that there are, there is, and there will continue to be tragedy suffering. So the Saturn in Pisces question is, this is where we can have a potential level of, of agency and where we can take action immediately in our reality is to not get possessed by the drama, the emotional turmoil that is taking place, but to actually recede 
first and analyze the internal relationship that you have to the outside world and its complexity and to get clear and to analyze and to internalize where your position is on the story internally for yourself and your own life and to reflect deeply on what are you contributing to the world what are you contributing to your life what are you can be contributing to the most immediate environment where you can have action and agency and come into a deeper alignment a cleanse within yourself These planetary systems at the moment are types of principles that can change the landscape of environments very rapidly and very quickly. And if you're caught in the crossfire, there's no empathy or sympathy for that process from a planetary perspective. This is the nature of how these tectonic plates are moving and occurring, and they're creating necessary need for where this energy is stuck, where this energy has become coiled, there needs to be a freedom. There needs, it needs to come back out. Vitality needs to move out. And so as that energy moves out like that, it interfaces with our psychological frameworks and structures of the world, and that's where the distortion exists. So you're seeing that play out on the stage at the moment. And for you, you can come back into a deeper state of reflection of what is emerging for you and let it challenge your pre-existing structures of and notions about what you think the world is and how it operates and to spend some time really reflecting on the nature of how and what is emerging for you and how to address those emergent patterns with an inquiry mind. What is this about? What am I feeling? What am I sensing? Where am I noticing that my emotions are getting caught up in and possessed by the drama of something? And ask yourself the question, what is the root of this in me? I'm going to take a look at the astrology chart for us over here. Uh, firstly, I just want to say thank you for spending the time that you have with me watching this video. And let's go ahead and take a look at the astrology chart. Okay, so this is the astrology chart of the new moon in Libra. As you can see here, this is where the new moon is sitting at 21 degrees of Libra. You can notice that there is a strong emphasis on the south node. And you can also notice that Mars is sitting on that south node as well. Mars is the planet that is associated with the north node. There's the node. Do you remember how I was saying to you that lunar and solar eclipses land on the nodes that's what makes them eclipses and special is that they happen to have to happen to exist on these um, abstract uh, points in space and these abstract points in space kind of hold together or tether together the way that consciousness streams right so this is the themes that we're dealing with libra aries so you can see here that mars is on top of that south node it's the planetary ruler of the north node you can see aries energy here so what that means is that aries and mars are very significant in the analysis right this energy that's sitting on the south node over here is also important in the analysis so what you listened to in the first sort of 30 minutes of this video is me communicating from a deep reflection and synthesis of what you are looking at right now okay so i'm going to break it down so i can show you in the astrology where i was bringing my attention why i was speaking the way i was speaking in terms of what i felt was important to say and hopefully you can uh, get a deeper understanding of, of where i'm coming from so first things first mars transiting scorpio mars entering scorpio and then of course Mars was aligned with the South Node over the last couple of days. And why this is significant, why Mars ruling the South Node or ruling the North Node and on that South Node is significant is because again, this is a holding pattern for the next six months. So for the next six months, we're experiencing patterns of eruption that will bring us into some form of abduction. 
and this abduction will then expose us to what needs to be changed, reorganized, healed, integrated, acknowledged. So it's like a collective dark night of the soul, as it were. It's incredibly potent. It's a powerful, powerful energy at the moment that has tremendous amount of metamorphosis potential. So if you are looking to de do s deep soul work, this would be a patterning where you can come into that self-inquiry process, whether on your own or working with me or however else you've been doing that. So Mars entering Scorpio is going to do two things. It's going to consciously expose the internal defense systems and structures that we have in place. And it is also going to reveal death. It is going to reveal that which has come to the end and must be terminated. So as I said before, the last month that we were, the last week, I said it's rough out there in Mars Pluto square. And then you've also got the Venus square, Uranus. We're now past that phase in the sense that Mars has now moved out of that exact square. It's still in the square, but it's out of the crisis phase. And so is Venus. Okay, so we're dealing with the aftermath of that situation and that's where we're at. Mars moving through Scorpio will open up our relationship to the underworld. So the abduction and to explore and expose the parts of us that have been hurt. So you can expect over the next couple of weeks to be very sensitive to the parts of us that are incredibly vulnerable. And you will see this on the collective stage as well. Something that I brought up over here, if you notice that you've got your, the south node of Uranus, by the way, the south node of Uranus is where the collective has deep memory of the way that we as human beings will try to understand ourselves based on our religion. That's an aspect of it. So right now, what is very strong for us is the way that we as human beings organize ourselves, organize ourselves as moral as, and having a moral compass. And with Uranus squaring Venus and Neptune sitting here in Pisces, in conjuncting, as in there's that in conjunct between the two, and Neptune squaring the north node of Uranus, okay, also the south node of Uranus, it's not there, but you can see it. We are in a very strange predicament where as everything is reshaping itself and reorganizing itself, the landscape is changing, and so is the way that we morally guard ourselves as a race to understand what's right and what's wrong. The, the, the boundaries and the definitions and the, the rules have become so blurred that it's almost impossible to tell something that is right and wrong or what is fair and what not fair and what is correct and what is not correct. And that is where a tremendous amount of the outside world will pull you into and you will find yourself spending a tremendous amount of your energy trying to navigate this complexity and nuanced energy where each person will try to figure out reality from their own biases, perspectives and points of views. And what you will notice is very limited amount of listening and a tremendous amount of telling. So that's something to observe with this full moon or this new moon in air or the solar eclipse in Libra. So if you want to navigate this energy in a more sort of complex, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that is nurturing, integrative and deeply humble, I emphasize the importance of listening as a way to say, if this is the position I take, then the same is applied for the other person. And then from there, we try to understand the differences between these two states. This is a level of respect. It's a principle of acknowledgement that if you want to be seen as a certain, ex like to have existence, well, then that must be passed on to the other person in, in a mutual way. This is very difficult, especially when there is so much complexity of emotional distortion, damage and fixation on what is right and wrong. So you will see the spectrum of complete, this is the right way, this is how it should be and controlling the nerve and controlling dynamics and a complete sort of like avoidance of interaction whatsoever. This is kind of the spectrum of Libra energy. 
but at the same time also where there will be a lack of cohesion between understanding where people come from and what has caused situations, right? Listening and understanding will be absent for the most part, but you can be somebody that could hold that space. The planetary nodes of Neptune sitting south node at 10 degrees. You can see here that Jupiter is currently squaring the planetary nodes of Neptune. This is why, again, there is a collective story that is emerging right now. This is where I get the emergence of the distortion at a collective level. The intent here is to bring humanity into a deeper alignment with Aquarian themes. And what you will see in the world today will be a display of the eruption of all of this trauma. And then from that, there will be a need to try to regroup and reorientate. And most of it will be dismissive and repressive, and some of it will be integrative. It just, dep you know, it just depends on, the, on who's integrating it. But that is one of the reasons why you see the world in chaos at the moment is because of the fact that that square between Jupiter, that is a planet interacting with the planetary south nodes. Jupiter is also the planet that is associated with the south node of Uranus. Jupiter is the planet associated with Sag, south node. And you can see there as well, Mars is also coming into a square with that south node. So over the next couple of days, you're going to see an intensity of the fracturing that occurs when patterns of suppression, distortion, and repression take place on both sides. And this is a controlling mechanism that comes into play. So the summary that I want to put across for us today is that this solar eclipse will bring into awareness over the next six months a need to inquire into what is emerging in your life right now regarding patterns of repression, suppression, what is being disfigured, what you have hid away, you want to address, you want to come into contact with, with intent to be curious about, to wonder about, to ask what it is and to let it come out. And then you want to be able to emotionally nurture those parts that have been fragmented, dis disowned because of the act of self-preservation. You want to come into the principle of understanding that listening as a way to relate creates balance and harmony between two people. You want to be aware that the sensitivity to what, what is just and fair will become even more highlighted over the next six months. And the way that you can participate in that process is understanding that your existence can be extended to the existence of another. And that is a very complicated and nuanced thing. I'm not saying this is where that moral perspective comes in. I'm saying that Libra teaches us that we need to observe things from a place within us that is acknowledging our own biases, our own limitations, and coming into contact with how we can maybe see something that we could be blind to. And then to that helps us contribute to the way that the world maps for us. So we can kind of update our reality for what is occurring with what our expectations are, right? So the planetary nodes are being activated at the moment. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of sensitivity collectively. The Mars through Scorpio will bring a tremendous amount of attention to where we are armored and how we will continue to keep reinforcing that armor as a way to protect. Now, if you're coming into a deep healing process, that Mars and Scorpio invites you to come into the part of you that has been wounded by betrayal, abandonment, loss, and to acquire into the nature of how that has shut you down, closed you down, and to explore the nature of what it is that is actually important to you. So I hope that this video today has given you a tremendous amount to think about. I hope that it has landed in a way that speaks to you. 
As I said, this video was pretty long, so there's a lot to digest. I totally understand that and assimilate. Take your time with that process. And finally, to remind those of you, there's links down in the description, either for those that are really serious about their astrology and they want more support to be able to further develop that in the outside world, to come out of the self-study paradigm. Let's have a conversation and let's see if there's a genuine opportunity to actually help you. And also for those of you that want to explore more deeply their inner soul story to understand their natal chart at a more deeper level. I also would love to chat to you and to see if there's an opportunity to help you. If not, that's fine. I could still push you in the right direction. Okay. All right, my friends. Take care. Bye-bye.